Welcome to the 174th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Sam Gailey, author of the thriller novel, Deep Winter. Stay tuned for the interview. The Reading and Writing Podcast is sponsored by the book-loving nerds at Riffle. Riffle is an online book community that connects readers with authors and books that they'll love. Readers use Riffle to find the next book that they want to read. And authors use Riffle to make their books stand out and drive sales. Join the Riffle community today at rifflebooks.com. That's R-I-F-F-L-E-B-O-O-K-S dot com. And look for the link in the show notes as well. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Samuel Gailey, author of the debut novel, Deep Winter. The writer Joe Lansdale said about Deep Winter, a fast-paced thriller, tense enough to give you paper cuts from turning the pages so quickly. Sam, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Great. Well, can I have you read the first couple of pages from your novel, Deep Winter? Sure, absolutely. Okay, uh, first chapter, uh, 1984. Danny had seen Mindy naked once before when they were just eight years old, a long time ago. Just the two of them back in the cornfield behind Pickett's bowling alley. Mindy had stripped off all her clothes and stood shivering in the cold winter night, waiting for Danny to do the same. Danny looked at her naked body for a quick, awkward moment his eyes glimpsing all the places that her cuffed denim pants and flannel cotton shirts usually hid. She had smooth, soft skin dotted with a few bruises and scratches on her knees and shins. He felt curious for sure, but it didn't seem right looking at a girl when she was all naked. It made him feel funny. His stomach grew tight and ached like when he ate too much saltwater taffy. When Mindy told him that it was his turn to get naked, Danny's head felt even fuzzier than it usually did. He knew it was a bad idea. He would get in trouble for sure. If Uncle Brett found out, he would pull out his belt and put a good licking on Danny's backside. Danny didn't want that to happen, didn't want another beating, so he took off running as fast as he could through the dead stalks of corn, feet slipping on patches of ice, face and neck getting all scratched up by dry husks, but he didn't go far before he ran into more trouble. Mike Sikowski and Carl Robinson stopped him before he made it back to the bowling alley and beat him up pretty good. Sikowski was the mean one, even back then. Is that a good, good dub? That 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 sounds great. great. Well, well, if someone listening hasn't heard about deep winter yet, how would you describe your debut novel? Well, it's, it's a suspense thriller, and it takes place in a very remote area of northeastern Pennsylvania in uh, 1984. And the main character, Danny, um, suffered a, uh, a tragic accident as a kid. He fell through some ice pond water and uh, was underwater for probably you know six to eight minutes and suffered some pretty bad brain damage as a result of that. And now as a grown man, he, he has a lind- uh, limited uh, intellect and uh, is kind of an outsider uh, in the town that he lives, kind of ignored, pushed off to the side. And uh, a murder happens uh, very early in the book, and Danny is blamed for this. And the story is really about him trying to redeem himself and uh, escape um, his captors. Great. Well, I, I know that you grew up in rural Pennsylvania, the setting for Deep Winter, but from what I understand, you've lived for many years in Southern California. When, when you started working on Deep Winter, was, were there any trepidations about setting the novel there? Did, did you um, go back to Pennsylvania to, to do any research along the way? Yeah, well, um, I, I definitely did not feel any reservations. Um, you know, I grew up there all the way through... Um, you know, as through high school when I was 18 years old. Sure. And it was a place that I was very familiar with. And I'm just, you know, was very drawn to that very um, small town feel. Um, 
I like the sense of isolation. You know, when you grow up in a community that is so small, all the other urban centers seem so far away, you feel very isolated and secluded. So it just felt like a really natural, nice fit for a murder mystery, you know, trapping my characters in this place. And um, so that's that's why I decided to approach the story and put it in that particular kind of setting. Sure, sure. Well, well, I know that you you also wrote for the screen. Was that was that for TV or feature films? I did a little bit of both. Um, I, I wrote for television a couple one hour shows on Showtime and Fox uh, years ago, and then I sold a, a few feature scripts that were never produced. But um, you know, I worked with the uh, the producers and the directors um, in writing these scripts. Uh, but unfortunately, they they were never sold. Sure, sure. Well, well, I'm I'm curious. When you were doing the screenwriting, were were you always working on prose fiction on the side, or or were you thinking at the time that you would like to do um, prose fiction or write a novel? Well, um, when I was in the process, you know, of writing for television and writing feature scripts, that was my full focus and concentration. Sure. And I hadn't really put a lot of consideration into trying to my, try my hand at a novel. But my wife, um, Ann Carrillo Gailey, she's a uh, novelist, and she sold her first book and was published about eight years ago. And just watching her go through that process um, was very interesting to me because she also came from a screen and television writing background as well. And it's, you know, when you're writing a novel, it's more of a, um, a singular vision. You know, it's something that you write for yourself, especially at the beginning, because you're not getting paid or it's not an assignment. So it's, it's coming from yourself, from your own soul. And, you know, there's no outside interference from, you know, producers or directors or showrunners. So um, a few years ago, she suggested or encouraged me to try to, to write a novel, and I did. And um, it's, it's absolutely something I want to stick with because I, I really love the novel writing process and uh, think it's a, it's a natural and nice fit for myself. Sure, sure. When you started working on Deep Winter, do you, do you remember, was there a particular idea or image or, or um, you know, what, what initially sparked the idea for the novel Deep Winter? Well, a couple things. Um, you know, I'm, I've always been drawn to characters that are on, on the fringe, characters that are on the outside. I've just been drawn to that concept both in literature and film. And um, growing up, there was, I knew this kid that was very much an outsider. He had some kind of learning disability which, you know, I didn't understand any of that at the time. And he just was, you know, very much cast off. And I was always, I guess I've always gone back to that kind of person, that kind of character, someone that's just misunderstood and um, kind of taking that person but putting them into a fictional uh, account. Um, I wanted to see what would happen to someone like him if they were accused of a crime and they didn't necessarily have the wherewithal or the capacity to defend themselves properly. Gotcha. Well, well, I know that once you wrote deep winter, you, you had a hard time finding a literary agent to represent the novel. Can you talk about what the process of finding a, an agent was like for you? Well, it certainly felt extremely and excruciatingly long to, to find a, a literary agent. It took me, I guess, about two years, a little over two years. Um, the, when I first finished, you know, a few drafts or a draft that I felt comfortable with of Deep Winter, I gave it to um, Amy Schiffman and she's with a company called the Intellectual Property Group. And Amy, um, she specializes in selling books to the studios. You know, she's done... Uh, Shutter Island, uh, Friday Night Lights, Winter's Bones, some, you know, really nice, great books that have been translated to film. And I showed it to her to, to see what she thought, and because she had a lot of connections to literary agents in New York. And she read the, the, the book and fell in love with it and decided to try to help me get a lit agent. And, you know, we, 
kind of the, her strategy was, you know, we sent it to one agent at a time, you know, someone that she had a relationship with. And for whatever reason, you know, they didn't um, respond to the material or just didn't feel like it was right or, or for whatever reason, you know, I got passed on by quite a few agents, you know, and, and often it takes an agent, um, it could, you know, six weeks, three months to read a manuscript. So I would just have to wait for each rejection and then, and then move on. And then finally, um, we found Natasha Alexis at the Zachary Schuster Harmsworth um, Literary Agency in New York. She read the book and loved it. And quickly after she signed me, she was uh, able to sell the book to Blue Rider Press uh, probably within you know six, eight weeks of, of signing me on as her client. Well, that's great. It took you a while, but the, then it moved fast. Yeah, it certainly did seem to to move quickly. So uh, during this time, were you working on anything else? Yes, absolutely. You know, I I, I couldn't just finish the one book and wait because from experience in screenwriting and writing for television, you know, there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of waiting, and I just didn't want to wait on this one manuscript to see what would happen because I'm um, I'm really at the most peace with myself when I'm writing. So in that two-year period, I've, I finished two other manuscripts, you know, in the same wheelhouse, suspense thrillers. So um, after Deep Winter comes out, you know, I'm sure we'll, um, we'll take out the next one and, um, and see what happens from there. Great. So, so what, is your, what is your writing process like uh, when, when you're working on fiction? Do you, do you plot and plan extensively given the fact that you were a screenwriter? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I guess maybe with most writers, you once you find what your story is, you know, your basic um, idea, and develop your characters, you know, I, I draw out and write out a very thorough outline of what the story is going to be, and you know, take a lot of time and get feedback, you know, from people that I trust and respect. And, and then once I actually start the, the writing process itself, I write everything by hand. I, I write notebooks, the whole first draft. And, um, you know, I, I really find something very organic about, you know, putting pen to paper, writing in a notebook. And um, so when I then decide to input, you know, the first draft, right. Onto the computer, you know, I'm kind of rewriting as I go, as I'm, you know, translating my very poor writing onto a, a Microsoft document. That that's interesting. I I think a lot of writers have gotten away from pen and paper. <laughs> yeah, I just you know, like I said, it's just something very organic and natural, and you know, I, I stare enough at a computer screen all day. It's really refreshing to step away and you know, kind of be more in the environment that you're writing in rather than in, in front of a computer. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Well, uh, what books or writers have you read in the last year or so, fiction or nonfiction, that, that made an impact on you that, that you would recommend? Well, there, there's quite a few. I, you know, I'm a very avid reader. Um, you know, one of my biggest influences um, is Larry Brown, who unfortunately is no longer alive. Yeah. But... Um, just, you know, a really magnificent writer. You know, I, I like how he captures, you know, an everyday man or woman uh, in their environment and just the, his way with dialogue, I, I just find absolutely fantastic and riveting. So Larry Brown is definitely at the top of my list. Um, I really enjoy Kent Hurroff. I think he's a really brilliant writer. And then, you know, the list goes on. Urban Waite, um, who was kind enough to give me a blurb on my book, is a really, really talented writer. He just finished his second book that came out a few months ago. Uh, Joe Lansdale is fantastic. Sure. And then, you know, when I, was, when I was first starting Deep Winter, you know, I, was, I did some research and read a lot of other books, kind of in a similar you know, wheelhouse, you know, with uh, when the main character has some, some damage to him. You know, I read um, Of Mice and Men, uh, Flowers for Algeron, um, Push. So, you know, it's, um, 
it's always fun to read, you know, whether it's the exact genre that I'm, I'm working in or not. But um, yeah, I definitely draw influence from all these, all these other writers. Sure. sure. Well, well, given your experience uh, writing and, and getting Deep Winter published, what, what advice would you have for an aspiring writer who may be listening and would want to get their own novels or stories published? Well, okay. You know, it's, I, I guess what I would have to say is, you know, make sure that you read a lot of, of good books, you know, by authors that you respect and, and then, you know, find your story, find your voice, you know, decide what you want to, what you want to say and, and be prepared, you know, for a waiting period would be prepared for rejection. But, you know, before you focus on, how I'm going to sell it, where I'm going to sell it, make sure, you know, your book is solid and it's something that you're really proud of. And if you are able, you know, get some notes from some, from some reliable people. And then, um, and then when you're finished, uh, I would suggest don't wait, you know, for that book to sell. You keep writing because you're going to grow as a writer. And, you know, even while I was waiting for a, a literary agent, you know, I would go back and, kind of go through my novel again and it would get better and better and better. So it, as cliche as it sounds, you know, just keep writing and uh, try to tell the story that uh, means something to you. Great. Well, where can people find you online if they would like to learn more about you and, and Deep Winter? Well, I have a uh, author website. It's uh, samuelwgailey.com. And on my author website, you know, it has a bio and it has events, upcoming events, book readings that I'll be uh, attending. It has reviews. Um, I did a Q&A um, that uh, is good for book clubs or if people just want to want to know a little bit more about me or the process. And, of course, you know, I have my own, you know, I have a Facebook. Um, so those would be two good places to start and find me. And, and, and in fact, I just put up an author um, uh, a video on YouTube. So uh, that's um, at Samuel W. Gailey on YouTube. And uh, it's a, about a two and a half minute little clip where I just talk about the process, what inspired me, and uh, a little bit about my characters in the story. Great. And I'll have links to all of those in the show notes as well. If Great. People are interested. Well, again, we've been speaking with Samuel Gailey, author of the novel Deep Winter. The novel is available now in bookstores or as an ebook, so go buy a copy. And Sam, thanks for doing this interview. I really appreciate it, Jeff. It was nice chatting with you. Great. Almost 90% of women have cellulite. And guess what? It's not their fault. We don't choose cellulite, but we can choose a different way to treat it. Meet Quo, Collagenase Clostridium Histolyticum, AAES, the first and only FDA-approved prescription injectable for moderate to severe cellulite in the buttocks of adult women. This non-surgical treatment is injected by an aesthetic specialist in 10 minutes or less. Individual results may vary. Do not receive if you are allergic to any collagenase or ingredients in Quo or have an infection at the treatment site. May cause serious side effects, allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis and injection site bruising. Seek medical help right away for any signs of allergic hypersensitivity. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions, if you have a bleeding condition or take medicine that prevents clotting. Most common side effects include bruising, pain, hardness, itching, redness, discoloration, swelling, and warmth at the injection site. Ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for product information. If you're ready to get to the bottom of your cellulite, learn more and find a specialist at Quo.com.